Would you take an airplane during a global pandemic? In today's Taiwan Insider, we're looking at air travel in the time of COVID-19. I'm Natalie So. And I'm Andrew Ryan. Let's start off with a look at the stories on our radar. Taiwan's annual Hanguang military exercises kicked off on Monday and will finish up Friday. So far, drills have simulated a missile attack, an air raid, a Chinese invasion, and a hostage crisis. With COVID-19 under control, it's business as usual in the Penghu Islands. This archipelago off Taiwan's west coast is a popular tourist destination, and the islands are hosting both an international sailing competition and a marathon. Seafood lovers are encouraged to sign up. This is probably the only marathon in the world where refueling stations for runners are equipped with squid balls and, for the first time this year, lobster. With temperatures soaring across Taiwan, doctors are urging men to carry sun umbrellas. That's as hospitals report that three quarters of the heat stroke cases since May have been men. Sun umbrellas are often seen as something for women, but doctors say they are important for everyone, cutting down on exposure to heat and UV radiation and reducing the chances of heat-related illness. And under the radar this week, it's the case of the missing clam. Kunding National Park reports that a giant clam has been stolen from a protected coral reef. This wasn't just any clam, it was a local celebrity that scuba diving tourists love to visit. The case remains open, but given the penalties in place for other crimes, like touching local sea turtles, whoever did it is sure to face a hefty punishment. And now for our words of the week, Andrew, ready to guess? Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Parking spot. Progress. Protest? No. Protestant? Protect. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Lots of words in your mouth there. <laughs> I know, and all of them Lots wrong. of guesses. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about how to protect yourself from the coronavirus when you travel um, on airplanes. We'll be talking about that in today's show. Excellent. You ready for my word? Yep. All right. Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Airplane. Air travel. Airborne. All right. Airborne. Yay. I thought it was fun. It's a reference not only to uh, people in the air, planes in the air. It's also a reference to oh. that virus. Oh, that's too. right. Those particles. That's right. So uh, we want to keep the people safe from airborne illnesses. Mm -hmm. And we want to keep them safe when they are airborne. Great. Let's put these on the shelf. So as you know, in today's show, we're talking about the future of air travel. And a question we've been getting a lot lately is, is it okay to fly to Taiwan? And that's the subject of today's Taiwan Explained. In today's Taiwan Explained, I'm going to tell you who can and cannot come to Taiwan at this time. All right, it's a very complex question, isn't it? It is, and it's changing all the time as well. Absolutely. Maybe it's easiest to start off with who can come to Taiwan for sure. All right, so every Taiwan citizen and person with an ARC, an alien resident certificate, can enter Taiwan. So citizens and legal residents can come at any time. So who is not allowed to come to Taiwan? Well, foreigners who want to just come for tourism or social visits. But foreigners can apply to come for other reasons, such as business, school, contractual obligations, family emergencies, and more. But there's a caveat. All visitors must test negative for COVID-19 within three days before arrival. Now, special rules apply to those from Hong Kong, Macau, and mainland China, and we'll have the links to those below. Also, one more thing to remember, everyone is subject to home quarantine after they arrive. All right, so now the people that I know who have, have done home quarantine have done it for 14 days, but I hear that they're shortening it for some people, right? So if you're a business traveler and you come from a low to mid-risk country and you're staying for less than three months, you can apply, but there are some conditions such as you have to have a negative COVID-19 test um, three days before you arrive. Also, you have to pay for your own test. Like You can apply for five day or seven day, so you have to play pay for the test on the fifth day to make sure that you're okay. So okay. They're, they're, they should be uh, virus free. Okay. Even though they're in a shorter quarantine. All right, well that's a lot to process. So I know that uh, people are probably interested in learning more. We're definitely gonna have some links to that information for you in the show notes below. What would it take to get you on an airplane during a pandemic? And what would you do to protect yourself on board? 
Recently, I spoke with Steph Chan, who is a physical therapist in New York City. Now, in May, she made the very difficult decision to board a five and a half hour long flight to San Francisco to see her parents. I began by asking her to describe the trip. So I arrived at JFK and it was empty. I mean, there was no traffic. I got out on the sidewalk and there were no other passengers there. It was completely deserted and I entered into the terminal gates and it was just the entire area was empty. I saw maybe two other passengers roaming around. It was eerie, it was very eerie just to see it that deserted. And this was on a Friday afternoon at like five. Wow, which is for JFK is just nuts. I mean, that's, that's usually one of the busiest times of the week. What did you do to keep yourself safe while you were on board? Um, I wore a gas mask. <laughs> And that was it. I actually didn't bother wiping down any of the surfaces. You know, if you really dig deep into the research, it's just not a real concern. It's not a big source of transmission. Really, the primary transmission is aerosols and inhaling droplets. Um, so with the gas mask, it is apparently 99.97% effective against, uh, you know, any particles and the N95 is 95% more effective against it. So feeling like I was in this gas mask, which was significantly more effective than N95, I kind of felt like, okay, as long as I just wear this and don't take it off, I should be fine. So once you arrived in San Francisco and you were with your parents, um, did you isolate or do anything to keep your parents safe? I did. Uh, that was sort of part of the plan that I had discussed with my parents in pretty you know, pretty deep detail beforehand. And I said, okay, if I go, these are gonna be the rules. When I arrive, um, I had like a whole protocol where I would change my clothes the minute I got to the airport. Um, my dad was gonna pick me up in the car. He was gonna sit in the front seat. I was gonna sit in the back. We'd keep the windows down. We'd both wear N95s and uh, drive home from the airport that way. And then once I got home, if I wanted to go out in the backyard, I would just go down the hall and go out the garage door and then out into the backyard. So I did that for 12 days hard. And then by like the 13th day, I got a little sloppy. <laughs> I was like hanging out more, I was sneaking into the kitchen. I was like, oh, two days more to go. By then I think I'm like at 98% clearance in terms of safety. All in all, like how would you rate this whole travel experience and kind of like your, your thoughts about the future of flying during this global pandemic? I don't actually think airplanes are that terrible to be in. They have these high grade, high power HEPA filters running. So I think the important thing is protect yourself on the plane, wear, wear PPE. And when you get to your destination, depending on where you're coming from, if you're coming from a hot zone, I mean, if you're coming from a hot zone, ideally you wouldn't fly anywhere, you would just stay put. But if you have to fly or you just really feel the need to fly, then I do think that when you arrive at your destination, you know, you need to try to self-quarantine for a while at least 10 to 12 days and you need to get a, a test you in theory i think maybe you could get a test three to five days after arriving um and see how that goes but again i think that to really be safe we need to make sure that tests are more reliable than what they currently are well thank you so much for talking with us again we've been speaking with uh, steph chan who is currently in new york city stay safe thanks you know, I was really impressed how she self-isolated herself from her parents to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. And then they can enjoy such a great time together. Absolutely. You know, and it's really important, too, because her parents are both in their 80s. Um, so actually, I was really interested to see what she did because I think about, you know, my parents are a little bit younger, but I would still want to self-isolate if I were to need to visit them as well. So how was her trip back? She said her trip back was a little bit more crowded. There was about 30% more people on that flight. Uh, and one thing to keep in mind is they're no longer blocking out the middle seats. So the flights will be a little bit more crowded uh, going forward. I asked her, would she do it again, even if it's more crowded? And she said, yes, she would definitely do it again. But she's also bought herself an even better face mask. Are you serious? Yes. That looked pretty cool when she <laughs> <Dude>. got <laughs> I want one myself. <laughs> well, she had a lot of great things to talk about during her uh, interview. And we have that full interview on Facebook and YouTube. 
Okay, we're gonna play a new brain game today. It's called Top 10, and these guys don't even know what's going on yet, but I'm gonna explain, all right? They're gonna have 90 seconds to guess the 10 items on my list. And there's a buzzer, and if you think of one item, you can press the buzzer and you can say one of the items. And you guys are competing to see how many you can oh. guess <laughs> within 90 seconds, okay? <laughs> We had no idea what this was going to be about. Yeah, so they don't know the topic, and they now they know how to play. Oh, okay. Okay. Throw hands, so Andrew, we'll throw the hands. topic. <laughs> do you guys want to know the topic? Yeah. And can it's, we? As soon as you say the topic, we can buzz in. I'm going to say go, and then our okay. timer okay. was going to start. Okay. The topic is the top ten safe air travel tips. Okay. Go. Wear a mask. Good. Uh, wipe down your seat. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so all you guys can do. Don't go to the bathroom. Good. Stay in your seat. Stay That's your one seat. of them. Don't eat anything. <laughs> don't eat anything. Okay. Don't drink anything. Okay. Well, mine was don't bring your own. I mean, bring your own food. Okay. But um, we'll, we'll take that. You got that one. All right. More, 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 more. You guys, uh, there's a lot more you can do. Wear goggles. Okay. I, that's a nice idea. I didn't put that on the list. Don't though. bring your pet. <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't on my list. Fly, wait a minute. Wait a fly minute. in a charter jet. Wait, wait a minute. Are <laughs> fly these, in a these charter are, jet. These are all for COVID-19 specifically, Yes, right? yes, yes. <laughs> Find a seat where you're the only person on the plane you or can't like three, that. three rows behind, no three but you can Okay, okay. Stay two meters apart from Stay people. I'll give you that. Only take domestic flights in Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> I better get a point for that. <laughs> that wasn't on my list. Refuse to interact with anybody. Um, well, that just pretty much covered what you just said. No talking. I didn't put that on the list either. <laughs> no carry-on luggage. I didn't put that on the list either. That's a pretty good idea. Wait, That's I, a good I, idea. I did the That's first. a good idea. No, no breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Hold your breath. <laughs> Use a straw when drinking. <laughs> I didn't put that on Get a COVID-19 test before you board the plane. <laughs> Kick everyone else off the plane. <laughs> Demand to sit with the pilot. Be the pilot. <laughs> That's a good one. That's well, those are all one. great ideas. I think we're done. That we out of. You guys out. got five out of ten. All right. So who got the and five? And Leslie got three. Ooh. Yay! I think some of mine were and excellent ones. <laughs> they just weren't on the list. Okay. Do you want to hear the list? Let's hear the sure. list. Okay. So avoid crowded planes. So try to book um, at off-peak times. Mm. Also, disinfect what other people have touched. Okay, such as your own um, clothes, your passports, you know, your own stuff. Choose a window seat. Oh. oh. I didn't okay, so that'll that. keep you farther away from people. What? So you can open the window and get <laughs> fresh air in the plane? <laughs> the next is about fresh air. Open the air vent. Okay. Did you know that actually the air changes every two and three minutes in oh. the plane? It, they take plane uh, air from the outside. So actually when you keep it on, it's better ventilation for you mm. and wash your hands or san use sanitizer as often as you can. That <laughs> no, that <laughs> Do we not say that? That feels like something really obvious. That. I feel like that that's just a given. It shouldn't so. be on the list. <laughs> <laughs> you guys had a lot of good ideas though. <laughs> All right, um, we're going to end our segment with a video about some people who really want to fly in Taiwan and what they did to do that. Life jackets are located under the seat in front of you. In the event of a sudden loss of cabin pressure, oxygen masks will drop down from above you. You're probably not going to need either, though, because this plane isn't going anywhere. The 90 people on board have tickets to nowhere, and as strange as it may sound, plenty more wanted to join them. Around 10,000 tried to sign up for this special airport experience event. The 90 chosen to take part on Thursday got to experience Taipei's Songshan Airport in all its glory, including, according to an airport official, an interactive art installation, a children's play area, and even a newly renovated restroom. Of course, it wouldn't be an airport experience without lines at the check-in counter and security. Somehow, though, when it's just pretend, these hassles of traveling don't seem to matter. Those taking part Thursday included Taiwanese travel lovers left stuck at home due to COVID-19, as well as a four-year-old excited to board a plane for the first time. Airport staff were excited too. One ground crew member says the airport hasn't been this lively in a long time. Capping things off were a visit from an airline mascot and a ceremony, complete with water jets, welcoming a plane brought over from Taoyuan Airport to help with Songshan's growing domestic traffic. This week on Hashtag Taiwan, I want to talk to you about customer service. 
Now, customer service can make or break a business, especially now when online reviews play a pivotal role in driving business. It's common for businesses to bend over backwards to make sure they get positive online exposure. That is, unless your Azai Mi Gao Dian in central Taiwan's Taichung City. Azai is a food stand that's famous for their sticky rice with pork floss and minced pork, which is called Mi Gao. Earlier this week, people went through the Google reviews for Azai and noticed something rather unusual. Google reviews allows business owners to respond to the public's reviews. I famously once said, there's nothing in life that can't be solved with a bit of sarcasm. Whoever runs Azai Mi Gao Dian's social media must have read my non-existent autobiography because their response to customer complaints are snarky. For example, one customer said, the pork here is too fatty, too greasy. Azai responded with, I'll tell our pigs to start losing weight. Thank you for your valuable input. <laughs> pigs losing weight. Chinese lesson time, you guys. In Chinese, the term chi ku means to eat something bitter. It's also a term used to describe hardship in life. In Taiwanese culture, people believe that a hard life toughens people up. So when a customer left a review saying the herbal soup here is more bitter than a bitter melon, Atai said, eating bitter foods helps you become a better person. Another one. This reviewer said, the minced pork has too much fat in it. There's only one small piece of meat. Atai says, our minced pork is fatty, we'll admit that. Our recipe, however, only calls for one piece of meat. One, as in the number of stars you've given us. Wu Bao Chun is a popular Taiwanese bakery chain. Atai brought them in on this culinary discussion. This review says, too greasy and too salty. I feel like they just add soy sauce to rice. Atai says, at the end of the day, Wu Bao Chun just adds heat to dough. I mean, he's got you there. Sandwiches are just meat and bread, cake is just icing on pastry, and coffee is just beans and water. There's so many good comebacks and quips that I want to share them all, so let's do a lightning round. Review! It's nothing special. I asked the restaurant for no cilantro. They still put cilantro in my order. Atai, we haven't ordered any cilantro this year. That was celery. It's okay if you don't cook much, but... Read more books. Review. The minced pork and sticky rice is okay, but the environment isn't too nice. Makes me not want to come back. Atai, you can order takeout and bring it back to your palace, your majesty. Review. The restaurant is dirty. Atai, hey, it was windy that day. A lot of garbage flew in from other places. Review. The food is nothing complicated. Why are the lines so long? What a pain. Atai, when you leave our restaurant, take a left. Walk for about three minutes and you'll see a convenience store on your left. They don't have any lines. But honestly, man, have some more resilience. The level of snark here is impressive, even for me. But I do foresee one problem. People might deliberately leave Azai Mi Gao Dian bad reviews just so they can get a response from the genius behind their social media. Hey, I just realized I run the Taiwan Insider social media page. Do you guys want to leave me harsh criticism? Are you ready for the Taiwan News Quiz? This is our lightning round. We have 60 seconds on the clock. And in the hot seat, or should I say the hot couch, we have <laughs> Leslie Dao and Natalie So, You guys ready? No. Not but really, but it's okay. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> All right, Taiwan is now allowing citizens to bring in children who have Chinese nationality. What's the age limit? Two and under. That's right. A fire broke out at a plant on Tuesday, injuring three and burning 2,000 square meters. What kind of a plant was it? Petrochemical. Good. Now, what did Taiwan's post office begin selling on Wednesday? Stimulus coupons. Stimulus coupons, that's right. In a military drill on Wednesday, a Taiwan Navy submarine fired something for the first time in 13 years. What was it? SUT heavy torpedo. Wow. Wow. More awesome. specific than I was even going for. <laughs> a live torpedo. What film won the top award at the Taipei Film Festival last weekend? Oh, no. Oh, it's not the tension. It is Detention. Oh, it is Detention. Cool. The horror film Detention based on a video game, incidentally. Now, Taiwan is urging citizens to reconsider travel to where? Oof. China? Vietnam? That's right. Okay. China, Hong Kong, Macau, <laughs> due to the new national security law. Uh -huh, and, that's right. That's right. Hong Kong. Uh, last week, we told you about a new volcano warning system. Now, scientists have discovered something new near Taipei. What was it? Another volcano? No, nope. there was some something underground. I forgot what that's it was. That's right. Well, <laughs> something underground? What is it, Godzilla? I'm not giving you the point for that. They found a two kilometer deep volcanic vent. That's where the lava would erupt from if it erupts. Um, I have a bonus question for you. You ready for this? Okay. All right. Finally, video surfaced this week of a food delivery man doing what to a customer's drink? Drinking it? Yes. Drinking it. Uh, 
Oh, You're not the food right. delivery person, are you? Cards on the table, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to incriminate myself, but... No, it's amazing. I have to tell you how they found out about this. They actually found video footage of this. And the reason is, is because the delivery man, the drink was inside a bag. He removed the bag and threw it on the ground. And then later, the cleaning person was upset that there was litter in the elevator. So they asked the guard to get the, the video, like the security camera mm. footage... They watched it, and then they saw that the guy actually took a sip of the drink That's before awful. he did it. Now, uh, the guy has been fired. Uh, unfortunately, however, the person who bought the drink finished the drink before they found no. out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so no. there you have it. That's this week's Taiwan News Quiz. A little bit earlier in our show today, we asked what it would take you to get on an airplane. Leslie... A private jet flown by disinfected robots, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> nice answer, Natalie. Uh, family emergency? Yeah. I like what Steph did. Oh. That was very touching. Yeah, actually, I would have to say the same thing, probably to go see family. Now, we asked this question on Facebook. We encourage you to go and look at some of the answers. Uh, one of our friends, Ben Blanchard, is hopping on a plane tomorrow to visit family in London. So we wish him and everybody who's traveling at this time of the year uh, safe travels. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Taiwan Insider. Do leave a comment below. We would love to hear from you. For Taiwan Insider, I am Natalie So. I'm Leslie Liao. And I'm Andrew Ryan. See you next week.